guards are the most iconic thing about the martial art. They look great, they look dangerous and are the first piece you learn when you grab a sword. They are a great didactic tool when you learn how to cut, how to think in fencing. But are they really worth the extra emphasis some people put in it? Where's the line between aesthetics and function? My name is Martin Fabian and let me take you on a short summer ride. Guards. There's a plenty of them. Fomtak, Fomtak, Albert, Ox, Flug, Langort, Schranghut, Zornhut, Vexel, Einhorn, Schlussel, Mittelhut, Hengetort, Nebenhut. So which one to choose? The author of the probably earliest KDF commentary is pretty straightforward when it comes to guards. He said, There's a reason Hans doesn't put much emphasis on guards. You know, when someone attacks, you have to leave it anyways. Let's rather focus on initiative and the Vorschlag. And that is something I totally agree with. What about my guest? Anton Anton, do you think that guards are really that important in fencing? Great, that makes the three of us! The old man really had a point. Positions or guards, nevertheless how much they please the eye, usually don't solve anything apart from psychological pressure. In distance, the one job they are really good at is providing a different opening. So we can probably expect a certain set of attacks to come, but even that isn't 100% reliable. Most of them aren't even really good at being a convenient starting position. Alber, a thrust and a streich and that's it. Ox, a thrust and a zwer. Fomtak, okay, you're gonna cut down. On the shoulder, you can do anything but what a target you become. Flug, great for resting and launching attacks but zero points for protection. Luckily, we can somehow cheat with a guard called Langort or Sprechfenster. After the old masters tell you you should only use four guards, a few pages later they say there's another even better one. Langort is plus minus everything you can see right now. It's usually defined as the position in which you extend your point towards the opponent. Langort is great because it's the very best compromise between an offensive and defensive position. When you point towards your opponent, they must get rid of the point with their attack, which limits their actions quite a lot. Also, in order to parry, one needs only to move always a little bit to the side. With such movement, you can safely hide behind your blade and either wait for the opportunity, take the initiative or launch your counterattack. There is no shorter line between your point and the target as if when you are standing in Langort. Langort and thrusting can thus teach you a lot about distance, reach and fine weapon control. There's a series of progressive exercises I use to teach distance and simple tactics. If you followed my rapier series, you can transform some of the techniques into a complex stimulus reaction set of exercises, which is very useful for everyone. Just think of it as of chess. Define your pieces and explore strategies. Let me get this straight. I'm not suggesting you should not use other guards. You definitely should and, ideally, in the way they work the best. Ox is better for hand arbeit, Albert for deception, Vom Tag to possess a threat, Fluke for launching and hanging, on the shoulder it's versatile. Have always a plan, know what you want to achieve and what are the drawbacks of individual guards. Think always ahead. Remember also this, Langort and its derivations will always be the best guard you can use. It's the best compromise between offense and defense. It keeps your opponent at bay and it allows for the simplest reactions to attacks. It's always ready to launch a thrust, to bind or to do a small parry with a follow-up. And now for the fun part. If we should go any further in fencing theory and practice, in the end you don't really need guards at all, even Langort. All you need is to have good distance management, comfortable starting position and a good grasp of the initiative. If you know these three things, nothing else matters much, even techniques complicated than a mere thrust or a cut. You remember the old fencing dude from the sources? He also said this. If you want to impress people on events, move from position to position, do a severe or two, then attack with something fancy suitable for entertainment. So yeah. Let's be careful with how we use the guards. In the end, in a fight, it's more about timing, Vorschlags and Nachschlags, and feeling than being fancy. 
Thank you for watching my video. Hopefully you've enjoyed it and see you around hopefully soon.